Dudes to Dads, brought to you by Dad University, is a podcast to help men understand and navigate the transition of being a single dude into a family man. How do we make sense of it all? Well, we probably won't be able to, but let's go ahead and have some fun trying. And we're back. We are back. I'm Jason Kreidman. I'm Alan Bush. And this is Dudes to Dads. Yes. So something funny that just happened before we started recording is Alan's Alan uh, just to give you a little insight Alan will typically will go about you know five to seven seconds of silence and Alan will put up his hand like all right it's time to go mm. and I totally forgot <laughs> <laughs> what we say in our intro like i literally went blank we've done this 195 times yeah, prior to this one if not more because we've recorded other sure. things and messed up or yeah, whatever yeah but literally i it, i just went blank <laughs> like i totally went blank that was just it was that was really that was funny. awesome it was a very real moment like it was wait what do we do now no i know and i'm like oh we got to start that over because i just totally messed up so anyways, now you're back on track you're literally back I am totally back. I, I get it now. And uh, yeah, episode 196. Uh, this one is the differences of parenting in the 1980s versus now. Dude. With a little a parentheses, how did we survive? Yeah. <laughs> um, we're actually the same. We're, we're two months apart. We're two, which yeah, is, we we were talking about right before the sh- recordings. Uh, yeah. Jason and I are literally just two months apart. Re- uh, roughly two months apart. So born in the mid-70s. I don't need to get yeah. my exact birthday. Yeah, for sure. Mid-70s. But our coming of age was in the 80s. Yeah, and grew up you know, in the early 80s. And, and, and times were definitely different. Um, <laughs> so I don't know, you know of our audience. Uh, there might be some younger dads. But also, if you, you, know, you are of somewhat of the same age, it might be kind of fun and nostalgic but there's definitely there definitely was differences in parenting and parenting <laughs> style and what we were allowed to do and what we weren't allowed to do yeah uh, a lot of it had to do with safety um, but I thought it would be fun to just go over some of the different things that we got to do with maybe how it is now yeah. and kind of compare those well, we're talking so, about seatbelts last episode I yeah no that's in there <laughs> is it in there that's okay, in good. there good yeah um, so the first one is helmets <laughs> So I, I, I'm not sure how many concussions it took for people to realize that, you know, what, it's probably a good idea to wear a helmet. Maybe you want to protect your child's head. Yeah. So bicycle helmets weren't required until about 1987. That's why I looked up oh, the law. Yeah. Yeah. So it wasn't required. And it was long after before it was even enforced. Correct. Um, yeah. I was going to say, because people didn't. I mean, I, I was actually a, a bike race like a bmx racer when i was real little i oh, did yeah. that for a stint yeah there we had to wear a helmet okay so it was required um, in that but i did all kinds of trick riding and stuff on our street oh, and we gosh, did i mean yeah. I, we rode our bikes all the time and i, I never too. wore a helmet yeah i remember d- doing jumps and yeah. skating out and stuff like that. i never wore yeah a helmet. i mean and i grew up also i mean i grew up skateboarding and you know uh we even went you know skiing and mm. snow skiing and stuff and none of that yeah had helmets <laughs> now skateboarding i should say if you were doing like a really insane ramp ramp right like a half pipe or something like that yeah you know or competing maybe you would wear it sure but the average person was not wearing they you know maybe you'd wear knee pads right if you're lucky yeah yeah how many skin knees did you get oh i mean just oh that's the thing it's just funny it's like we didn't have any of this protection (laughs) and i mean i guess a lot of people probably got hurt i remember like this again we're probably gonna do this a lot during this episode so i apologize in advance but like um i remember when i was a kid i was riding my bike and i did this like a what do you 218 with 360 right two of them on my bike in the dirt fell down um skinned my knee went back to my grandma i wasn't even crying i'm like oh grandma i have it. and she looked at my knee and went mm. <laughs> like pus is coming out and all kinds of stuff <laughs> just, she just kind of was like okay let me just It'll calm down yeah <laughs> rub some dirt put on some it. gauze on it she cleaned it off put some gauze on like a gauze pad like a big giant one and i didn't think anything of it yeah <laughs> didn't, i know didn't nowadays me. they have a little paper cut and it's like you got to take them <laughs> yeah. to the emergency room <laughs> so yeah i mean t- times have changed for right. sure um this one next one is riding in the back of a truck a pickup truck oh okay yeah so it's funny we were just camping last weekend my son and i and there was about 10 of us 
you know, half adults, half kids that were piled in the back of a truck mm-hmm. in the, on the campsite because we were just going down this dirt road. And we like, they were saying, ah, you don't need to walk. We'll go ahead and drive this car. You know, it was like a mile and a half or something like that. And so they just took us on, you know, in the back. And I was like, wow, this feels like the eighties, you know, and I mentioned <laughs> it, all the other dads were laughing because they're all, it's so true. Yeah, it's like, yeah. we literally would pile in the back of this car. <laughs> um, I, I don't know why we were allowed to, because it is extremely dangerous. <laughs> when you're going at high speeds. I mean, sure. we weren't in a high speed situation. Yeah. Um, I mean, at least in most parts of the U S parents wouldn't think of that now. Right. I think there are still some, Oh yeah. You know, some places where you can get away with it and in other countries, I know, cause one of the guys was commenting back where he lives. He's like, no, nah, we still do that all the time. I mean, kids <laughs> will just pile in the back. Right. Um, so yeah, I mean, riding in the back of a pickup truck though, imagine that like going down the street, in a busy street. Oh, I, mean, I don't know about the highway, but no, but even if yeah. like there's a small bump that you're going at a certain speed, you can get catapulted out of yeah. that thing. And, and like, if you've been in the back of a bus when they go over a bump that was totally. unexpected. You go in the air. For yeah, there's a no belt. There's no like <laughs> restraint. There's right. nothing. It's just you riding in the back of this car yeah, and just which, praying. Yeah. Which brings us to the next one, which is seat belts. So <laughs> I recall my seat belt was my dad's arm. <laughs> like we would stop and my dad would stick out his arm yeah. to like you know, make sure like, I didn't fly through the window. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> we just never, never wore. It wasn't belts. required, and yeah. I think you know it wasn't until probably the later eighties where it kind of became more of a thing. No, it doesn't say they didn't have. It says people. all states. I, I wrote this down actually. All states had the law by nineteen eighty five. Okay, yeah, but. Even in eighteen or in nineteen eighty seven, only eighty percent of children used a car seat. Right. I mean, so it's like, oh, dude, I don't even remember. I, I, I don't think I was. I don't have a memory of being in a car seat. That means yeah. that I, I don't think I was in one from ages three on. Yeah. Right. Maybe two or one or when I was. No, like, I mean, I, that's I'm wondering what the I was trying to find that of like you know the 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 child just sitting on the lap. Yeah of an adult or just being in the seat or just being in the seat and just have yeah. the seat belt a certain way. You put yeah. I mean, there. it was uncomfortable. Or sure. Whatever. I mean, I remember then as a kid, like I remember it rubbing on me, mm-hmm. you know, I was always a little, cause I was a little kid and yeah. so like, you know, being really uncomfortable. So yeah. But I mean, I can't imagine. I mean, luckily I don't remember ever getting an accident. Right. Yeah. Well, just, oof, you know, <laughs> lucky. <laughs> yeah. Uh, another Roll one. I know another one, sunscreen. So, yeah. you know, I, I grew up in sunny Southern California. So, yeah. um, um, but the only sunblock and sunscreen that we put on was maybe a little bit on our nose if we went to the beach. Yeah. Like if we were near the, like, I mean, I was a swimmer. Yeah. I don't remember ever putting on sunblock. Now, here's the thing about that. I'm wondering if there is some kind of weird complication with the ozone layer, not to be a conspiracy theorist, or, but I. It wasn't as bad back then? Yeah, because I, I burn, and I am I have melanin, you know, like I'm being, you know, yeah. my racial background. Um, I, I'm light skinned, but that being said, I don't remember. Maybe also, this is another part of it. I don't go out in the sun as much as I used to. Your so, vitamin D level. So, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, exactly. And I maybe I had a deeper tan than I did before, but I remember it burning a little easier now yeah than i did when i was could younger be. so it could be some combination of those things but you're right it was like you know, a little bit of nose a little <laughs> bit of this you don't put like slather no. it all on no like i mean we, that's why i said we maybe put on but it's funny because my kids now yeah and it's not just my kids but it, i mean I, I was gonna say my my wife is a nurse that works in skincare so that you know has yeah. a little bit of bearing on it <laughs> sure. but the <laughs> You know, you always see kids putting on sunblock at school. Well, so that's it's part of the daily routine now. I mean, I, they use a little like you know thing on their face, yeah. like a stick, and then they use. I mean, it's just it's part of the routine. And it, do you? And this is a question, actually. Is it do you do the kids or do you even put sunscreen on just to go outside? Not not going to the beach. I understand that, but like, but just to go just outside for, the day. for a walk. Yeah, yeah, or they do. No yeah, kidding. I mean, my, 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 especially my son has very fair skin. Okay. So he's um, a little more sensitive. And my, to and it. my wife, being, you know, in the skincare industry yeah. is like very protective because sure. she had things that were, you know, she had sun damage as a kid. Yeah. Um, I, I don't put it on as a daily, which is probably not, you know, that smart. No, but, but, I mean, I'm, I'm also a, 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 among fluorescent lights all day. I sure. mean, I drive in my car for five yeah, minutes. And yeah. I'm in fluorescent lights and then I drive home. So <laughs> right. I don't know how much sun damage or exposure I get on a daily basis. Sure. But if I do go out, like we went camping, I made sure I have it on at all time. Okay. Yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah. You know, I just, um, 
Or for the most, yeah. I mean, I always put it on my lips and my nose and my face. And, okay, you know, I'm all right, making yeah. Sure. So yeah, that's the thing. I mean, maybe because I'm an 80s kid, and also you know, as yeah. we're talking about that, I don't put on a lot unless I'm like out exposed to it. Con- like, like you if, think you're going to be sitting in the sun? Yeah. Like yeah, if I'm yeah. out on a, on a boat or or at the beach, I'm sitting in right. the sun constantly. If I have to go walk into the woods, I'm like, well, I'll be in it. Sometimes I'll be under a tree. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> so yeah, I, I, that that probably you know you don't have the problems. I've had some things removed from my. Nose oh no, kidding. And, okay. Yeah, I mean, like, but okay. I didn't think I, I mean, I don't get a lot of sun exposure at all. Right, right. I really don't. I mean, I'm not out sitting in the sun. That's so funny. I mean, I, so, yeah, just the difference now of like lathering the kids up. And so, <laughs> right. um, you know, it's just part of the routine for yeah. sunscreen. Yeah. Um, the other grounding. So, I, you know, I, there's still parents doing this, but it was really prevalent when I was a kid. I mean, that like was the every, thing. yeah, every kid except me got <laughs> grounded. Um, I mean, kids were getting grounded left and right. Yeah. For everything. Like, that was the parenting. It was technique. always like, yeah, oh, can bill come over or Scott come out? No, no, he's, he's grounded. grounded. Yeah. Like it was, that just was a big thing. Always. Yeah. All the time. Totally remember that. Um, I, I think now you either see kid or the parents are being a lot softer mm. on their kids. In other words, there's just not, you know, or they remove something that's not as re- prevalent as having your friends over or going to something. Yeah, there's not. It's not really a grounding. It's like removing, the, like taking away their electronics or exactly you know, something like that. Yeah, and that's you know? a, you're right. It's some things that we were talking about, you know, in previous episodes where like it's taking things away, taking things just, away. It's yeah, like it doesn't okay, work. Well, I don't know what you mean by that, but okay. yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's just or Before it was take away your, your outside time. Yeah, I mean, which I, you know, I don't subscribe to. I've talked about, you know, for me, it's talking about the right and wrong and allowing natural consequences to happen if right. they do. And it's, you know, it's discussing choices and those kinds of things. So I, yeah, I, I can't agree with that one, but it's still it still happens and it mm. happened a lot. You know, a right. lot of kids were grounded, which I don't see that as much now. Right. Um, but it's interesting. Yeah. Um, another one playing outside was different so there's a couple things related to this so we really just had to be home when the street lights came on yeah like that's when we had to be home like my, i don't think my parents even knew where we were <laughs> or what we were doing most of the time i mean i think for two months during summer i think my parents just said i'll see you at the end of the summer like <laughs> you know so wait a minute let me ask you a question and this i already know you know you for a really long time but like you know did you grow up in a rural or urban environment suburb suburb okay but makes sense. we lived near the forest so in other okay. words it was like our area was called a forest and so, so in theory it's we had not huge even theory, trees back yeah, area like that's a more rural setting and that's how i grew up it was in the woods. You could, yeah, you like, could call it. Yeah, right. So we could go in the woods, even if you were in a suburb. Like I grew up in a we town. We built forts. Yeah, we did all kinds yeah. of stuff. So we had, we had a kind of very similar upbringing, except your accessibility to city life was a little closer. Yeah. But I was like in a, I was in a large town. Yeah. And then we would ride our bikes for five miles mm-hmm. to the next area and like on regular streets. Yeah. You know, it yeah. wasn't. Um, it wasn't like freeways you had to get across. No, right? no, no. no. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We would just ride like side streets or through trails. I am curious if people want to write a podcast at newsadads.com that what they're upbringing was and like where like what was your upbringing even in the 80s like if you were part of because i remember being a little kid in a very urban environment might have had a different setting of than, course than um than being in a rural because i've done both but i was more of a kid in the rural environment right so when i was really little i was in the urban but then i moved to a rural yeah we were just in a you know middle class suburban neighborhood yeah you know and it, it, it but it was funny because it was just like literally like yeah okay just be back when the street lights go yeah. on yeah and we would play all day and do yeah. that which i just can't imagine now even my own kids yeah yeah. Like, hey, come back when the street lights come on. I don't. It doesn't matter if I don't know where you are. Like, go ahead and uh, bike ten miles away to a baseball card store in the other town. Like, that's what I did. No, I did the same thing. You know, and I had parents that were really involved and like, you same know, here. But it's just, it was different. They're like, all right, yeah. And then you come, and then as long as they know you're okay, hey, and like, okay, I'm coming home. Maybe they did know where I was, but I, they didn't seem like. Maybe they figured you don't have a really big world. Ah, he's a good kid. He'll he'll make it. <laughs> he'll be fine. You know? Um. <laughs> A lot of trust your parents had yeah, in my parents. they did. Well, they did. They really did trust me. <laughs> but that being said, it you know, turned out okay. Which, I, it's interesting because I totally trust my kids in that way. It's like the environment you don't trust. That's the you problem. We we're, were we're more sensitized to what's going on around them. Yeah. And we hear all these stories and we, you know, things have happened. Right. So we're like, let's just protect them a little well, bit. Well, I mean, and even where we live, um, the, it's not easy to like ride a bike. Right. 
on some of the roads. Like there's not an, an area to ride a bike. Like it, you share the road. And that's why I was curious with cars. Like, and there's some, there's some sketchy areas. Like well, I yeah. wouldn't want to ride it. Through. Right. Exactly. And, yeah. and I was, that's why I'm wondering like people who grew up in a kind of a small town or very like kind of rural suburban area. Do they have that experience still? I'm curious right. because I don't know anybody. Probably, we're, in, yeah. we're in a city right now, you right. know, and even though you're in a good part of the city, it's still city. And it's still, like you said, it's still sketchy to ride a bike in certain areas because yeah. it's a little weird. And the yeah, I mean, we have, I mean, I'm, I'm sort of in an area where uh, dare say it's kind of woods ish too, yeah. but the street just doesn't have any shoulder or the street doesn't have. Yeah. So like it's not you can't walk, it. you can't ride your bike in right. certain places. There are, there's other areas where there is a sidewalk, Yeah, you know, like right around our house there is, yeah. um, like we're in a cul-de-sac so that, you know, they could at least do that. Yeah, but yeah. other than that, like, you know, people are flying through the neighborhood. Yeah, like for sure. I, I wouldn't, I don't want to ride my bike through there or, you know, dude, it's, I'm worried about your kids now, yeah. <laughs> you know, it's just, well, and that's the thing. It's, it's changed. Yeah. Uh, another one smoking. So <laughs> it wasn't uncommon for parents to smoke in the car or in the house or in the house. Yeah. I remember I had a friend who I would go over to their house Mm -hmm. and it smelled so bad from smoke. I hated it. Like I really liked hanging out with my friend. Yeah. But the house just stunk so bad. Yeah. Dad smoked cigarettes. Oh yeah. Yeah. And um, like, you know, they'd have like filters going and like, but it didn't matter. Like it's everything stunk. (laughs) And um, I just remember that smell. And then you get into the car, same thing. Oh yeah. Yeah. And just like, you know, the windows up. Yeah. Like they didn't even think about putting the windows down, like hot boxing you into the, you know, nicotine it's okay kid secondhand smoke yeah it's all right you know these are good for you so i i just can't imagine that parents would do that now i would hope not well yeah um, and you still get that i'm sure there's some no happenings like that but there's a lot more prevalence of people being anti that and if they're gonna smoke they go outside do it there and then come back in like yeah. they know the dangers and the or they're smoking whatever those new things are that don't have it oh the vape and all yeah. that <laughs> yeah and that's and that, that happens too but like and they smell a lot better but like the thing is like still it's still nicotine and stuff but it's co- so funny like you know know we grew up with those like just you don't smoke commercials but that's like our parents that grew up with that or our grandparents right. or whatever it is so they're basically building their the upon we're really building upon what they had to go through you know? totally yeah totally. It's so funny yeah and then the last one um the change in dad's role so you know i think in the 80s less moms worked yeah. You know, it just, that's just how it was, mm-hmm. you know, I mean, it was, it was, it was changing. It wasn't the fifties, right? but you know, it still was less. I mean, at least where we lived, most of the moms were either stay at home or had some kind of maybe part time, you know, job. Not many of the moms that I can recall as my friends, like had full time, you know, um, the, 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 the moms had full-time careers. Sure. You know, yeah, just, yeah. It, it just, it wasn't like that, but it also could be where we lived or, or such. Yeah. Um, as we became, as, as I got a little older though, you know, my mom began teaching her courses and doing mm. those things at night. And I don't even remember, I think maybe I was in even in elementary school a little bit later, like at the end of elementary school, um, where she was working, but she would work in off hours and do things. And so the role of dads changed, you know, as, as, the moms were working more. The dads had to step in and, and, and have more involvement and in, in, in the child rearing. It wasn't. And so that, I think that was changing quite a bit during that time. You know, it had already, I mean, it's not saying it's like, you know, the, the balance was totally out or right. off, but I definitely saw changes in that happening. And especially like with my own family, um, you know, the, the dad just had to spend more time with the kids. And then nowadays, you know, that has changed quite a bit. I mean, dads and moms have quote equal roles, you know, I mean, there's, there's certainly in some families where, you know, there's a lot more stay at home dads now too. Mm -hmm. Um, but there's certainly in, in many families though, you know, the balance, if you will, is equal, Yeah, you know, they're both working or they're both have different times off or whatever. And so that I think has changed quite a bit. Yeah, for sure. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I thought it was just interesting to, to take some of these, you know, little nuances. Do you remember anything else that you are you can think of? I'm, like, I'm sure. I, I probably need more time. Yeah. There could be a part two of this episode because there's probably things that we can think of now. As a matter of fact, I'd be curious to kind of do a little crowdsourcing on this topic. Talk to <laughs> some of our friends, people who grew up in the 80s yeah. and, and or even the 90s. Like, what's the difference between the decades? Yep. Like, how they grew up versus how – because I have, you know, coworkers Well, they and had friends. fresh prints. <laughs> yeah, right. And we have coworkers. Well, yeah, like television. 
yeah. was a different thing than now. Saturday morning cartoons. Exactly. Things it's like all, that. Like Saturday morning TV cartoons. Watch, yeah. TV in general has changed. Like now you have instant access to everything. I was talking to a colleague about kids and they were like they were, they were curious when, we, when they were at a hotel, like why they couldn't just change the, the <laughs> get what they want. It was just TV was on. Right. And you tuned into it. <laughs> like tuning into things like radio and, and television is different now than when we, when we were kids. You had to look at a TV guide to see what time something was <laughs> and on. Then you had to be available at the time that that thing right. came on and tune into it. Right. It was now it's completely accessible. I can rewind it. I can do this. And before yeah. it was like VCRs. So things like that. I could go into a whole thing about pop culture That's and talk crazy. about that. Oh. <laughs> Make I'm feeling old now. <laughs> okay, let's get. I'm gonna go take a nap. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. And so if you grew up in the 80s and, and there were some differences that you remember, you know, give us a note. And Alan, what how can they get in contact with us? They can send us a snail mail. <laughs> Back in the 80s. A pigeon. This is a, a pigeon. Fax very a pigeon. us. <laughs> you can fax us at... No, you can actually send us an email. Podcast at dudesdads.com. Uh, get a hold of us on our modern technology with social media. Twitter at dudes to dads. Facebook, dudes to dads, com, and then go to the video section of, of, of YouTube and whatever uh, uh, channels are on there. Look up Dad University, and you'll find some really great tidbits and information from Jason. Um, and then all, and more importantly, and more than anything else, please go to the podcatchers that you listen us on, and Apple. I want to say Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, um, any other ones that we're going to be on, and are currently you're listening to us on. Leave a review, subscribe to those channels, and uh, share it with your friends. It really helps perpetuate the show. Awesome. Well, Alan, as always, thank you. Thank you. And we will see you next time. See you next time.